Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on 3D buildings, in particular this old looking barn here. Now this is essentially a UV unwrapping exercise. It is aimed at beginners but do make sure that you've looked at my beginner courses which you can see in the description and it's a good idea to look at my first UV unwrapping tutorial which is unwrapping an old fence. You can also check out my website where there's free courses on there. Or if you want a more in-depth paid for course, I would suggest the CG Boosts course, which again is in the description. All the textures used for today's session are from textures.com and you can find the links to those in the description. So let's jump straight in and begin. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in one of those images that we've got, so we've got it as a reference. So I've got my folder here with all those images. We'll start with the front, or what I'm calling the front, and I'll just click and drag that into our scene. Then I'll go into our scene and you can see it's all a bit skewed. The easy way to sort that out is make sure it's selected and press Alt G to remove any movement or grabbing and Alt R to remove any rotation. Then we can press R X 90 to rotate in the X axis 90 degrees. I'm going to delete the default cube and insert a plane and we're going to line up our plane with the front of this building. So Shift A to add, mesh plane and let's rotate that in the X axis 90 degrees. So RX 90. Now let's go to front view with one on my numpad. Zoom in a bit and move it roughly into position and go into edit mode and start aligning it. So let's go to edges with two on my keyboard or you can press the buttons up here and select the top edge and drag it downwards in the Z axis. So G then Z. The bottom one, G then Z and the two side ones, G then X in this case, and G then X. So we've got this nicely lined up. So before I build the other bits, I'll show you exactly how you can go about adding the image to the front of our building. Let's go up to the shading tab here, and so it doesn't get confusing, I'm going to go back to object mode tab, select on my empty, and move that into a new collection. So M, new collection, reference. Now that's in there, I can easily hide the reference collection, and hide my references. Again, the links to the particular files are in the description. So we need this to have a new material. So let's press new and we'll name our material front. Now, of course, we can change the color and other things on our principled BSDF, but we need an actual image to go into our base color. So let's add that image in again. Shift A to add, texture, image texture, and hook this up. Nothing there at the moment because there's no image in here. So we've got to open our image. The easy way to do that is to go to this arrow here and there's our image already loaded into Blender. So we'll pick that one and we can see it appears on the front there. But it's not quite in the way we want it. If I bring back our reference, you can see that we only want the front and the whole image is stretched across the whole thing. I'll hide the reference again. So what we need to do is re-unwrap this. So I'll go into edit mode select all and press U and unwrap. Now that's made it go all strange. What we can do is just bring out the side here and change this to the UV editor. Zoom out so we can see our whole image. I'll make it just a bit bigger as well actually. And we can see there's our unwrap there and we can see how that's mapping out to our area over here. So it's a bit skewed and the wrong way around. So we could select all these vertices, but actually it's much easier if we select either faces or islands is even easier. So if this was split up into lots of different faces, we could select them all as one island. So that's lots of connected faces. So I can now click on this and rotate 90 degrees. And we can see it's kind of working, but it's the wrong way up. Let's just grab it into position so you can see what's happening when I move it about. And you can see at the top here is actually the bottom here where those tiles are. So we need to rotate this 180 degrees, R 180. And, we've, and I've rotated it and flipped it over. You could actually scale in the Y axis, going up and down, minus one, and that would flip it as well. And now I can start putting this into position. So let's put it here, scale up a bit, scale up a bit. And you're just moving it around and trying to map it to our barn here. You can scale it in one axis a little bit, so scale in the Y. If you didn't want these holes at the top, for example, you could get rid of them like that, and we can get away with a bit of that. But do be careful not to distort it too much. If I scale in the X, you can see it becomes stretched. So watch out for that sort of thing. Because we lined it up with our reference image in the background, it should pretty much match the scale. Okay, so that's how we map 
the textures to our objects. There are just another couple of things which are really useful to do. One is to bring up the roughness because can you see it's all flat at the moment and really sort of shiny almost. So if we bring up the roughness, we can stop that from happening and bring down the specular and you can see it starts looking a little bit more realistic and less glossy. The specular is the sort of amount of highlight you see and the roughness is the sort of reflectivity. So very high roughness is very rough and obviously a very low roughness is what we term as glossy. There is actually one other thing you can do. It's quite handy, but it's not the best practice, but it does work. So I'll bring this back slightly. Shift A to add vector and bump and we can plug this color into the height of this bump and then the normal into the normal and normal maps are basically bumps and you can see it doesn't look that great at the moment it's not ideal like I say but it can give us a bit of texture and a bit of bump we'll have to bring the strength right down a bit until it becomes a bit more acceptable really when it starts going a bit sort of grainy like this just before there really so maybe about 0.2 in this case so it just gives us a bit of bump and a bit more realism like I say, this is not the best practice, but it does work. Much better is to have actual normal maps with your textures. Incidentally, you can take this texture into something like Materialize, which is a free program. I'll try and remember to put the link in the description to a tutorial I have about that. And it will change these into things like normal maps, which can be useful for plugging in and you get much better results. But that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. So let's follow the process for the next part and then I'll encourage you to try and have a go yourself in a moment. So back to layout mode, bring back my references and I'll actually click on that collection. That means when I bring something else in, it will go into the references collection. So now when I click on my folder of my images, I'm going to go to the side one just here. Click and drag that in. Ah, now that didn't work because I'm in edit mode. So let's go to object mode with tab, then try and drag in our side view and it works this time. And again, let's click on it. Alt G and Alt R. Then we need to rotate by the X 90 degrees and rotate by the Z 90 degrees. And I'm pressing enter after each of those commands to set that command. So R, Z 90 and then enter. So I'll probably cut this into two sections, this top bit here and this bottom here. It's just an easy way to do things. So let's start with the bottom. Let's go to side view with three on a numpad, shift A to add mesh plane. And that's right in the middle here. We can't see it until we rotate around the Y axis, which is the one going across the middle at the moment, the green one, 90 degrees, and then press enter. So once again, into edit mode. Now you might be tempted to do this in object mode. So let's say I'm back into object mode with tab and I move it into position and then I start scaling it. Now you may get issues with your UVs if you start doing that because if I press N on my keyboard and go up to the item, your scale may become non-uniform and that actually affects the way it unwraps. If at any point your scale does become like this but you want to keep your shape, you press Control A to apply the scale. Watch what happens to that number when I apply the scale. It goes back to 111. So you may have been tempted to press scale Y to sort of move it across like this and then go into edit mode. Well, it's got non-uniform scale so you press Control A and apply the scale. So let's go into edit mode. So with my edges selected, I'll select the top edge, G then Z, and pull that down into position. Maybe just underneath this sort of metallic cladding here. This one at the bottom here, G then Z, and pull that up. It doesn't really matter if we get some grass in because I'm planning to put some grass in later. G then Y to move this one inward slightly, and G then Y just outward slightly there. And that's roughly covering it, that's great. So I've lined it up. But actually what I forgot to do in this case was to line my two reference images up. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference and it's not particularly time consuming to change it. But ideally the height of this would be the same as the height of this one. But like I say, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. So let's go into object mode, just grab it in the Z and line the tops up. You can be a little bit rough with this, it doesn't matter too much. And into edit mode and let's line the bottom up. So G then Z and line the bottom up. I might as well make it a bit thinner as well, G then Y, because I've changed the scale slightly of the height. So it's slightly smaller in the height, so I'll bring the width in as well. Okay, so I can hide my references again. I'll hide those. Ah, but my plane has disappeared as well. That's because it's in my reference collection. So I can click and drag this out and put it in my other collection, and it appears again. So it'd be nice if this one was perfectly aligned with the front here. Well, what we can do is turn snapping on. If I turn this magnet on here, it's by default is 
snapping to the grid. If we change that to vertex, and then we, in object mode, grab and pull it up to that vertex, it will go in line. So G then Y and pull it back until it's about roughly in line. I'm leaving a tiny bit of gap because I think it's best to have some sort of post or something in there to hide the seam, which I'll talk about in a moment. So we've got the side of our barn ready. I do think it's a bit wide, so maybe I'll just drag this one in. So G then Y, and maybe it's a little bit longer than it is deep. And it's also worth pointing out in that sense that you don't have to follow these reference images perfectly. They're just there as a guide. So I'll hide those again. Let's go back to the shading editor where we've got our UV editor ready. You can also use the UV editing as well, but the shading editor will help us because I can see my actual material here as well. So the same process for this one. New material, this is gonna be called side. And try and see if you can remember the process yourself now. So have a go at it, see if you can get it to line up and then see how I've done it. Okay, so the first thing we did was shift A to add a texture and an image texture. And then we can hook that up. Notice I've still got snapping on, so when I move it around, it feels like it's snapping. You can turn that off over here and it will turn it off in your whole scene as well. I'll hook this up but we won't see anything yet because I need to load in that image. And I brought the image in already, so I can come to my little down arrow here and select the image. If you haven't done that, you can just press open and find your image. But it hasn't appeared in here, so it's not particularly helpful at the moment, but we can choose it again over here and choose that image again. Now I have to be in edit mode to see my UV, so let's go into edit mode. And because I've got edges selected, it can't see my edges. I need to have faces selected, and so I can select that face and then they appear, and you can see it's got this whole image over here. So we need to resize this. So I need to click on this, scale it down, and I actually need to rotate it 90 degrees. So just have a look where the top is. So there's the top, and yes, it's worked this time. It's across the top here. So we need to scale it in the Y to get it just underneath that, and scale in the X to get it to go across and find a happy position somewhere around there. We want the slats to sort of line up in a sense to be the same size as these ones very roughly. It doesn't matter too much because they could easily have used two different woods or whatever. So out of edit mode and we can see it's lined up reasonably well. So in object mode we can nice and simply copy this object so shift D to copy and then grab in the x-axis but it'd be a good idea if I turned on snapping again make sure that vertex is what you're snapping to and then G, then X, and pull it to this vertex. See, because I pressed X, it will only go across the X axis until it finds a vert that I point to. So there we go, and we can do the same for this one. This time, G, then Y, and it will only move along the Y axis until I snap to a vertex like I'm doing here. But I forgot to press the Shift D, so Shift D, Y, and then move it to the other side. Of course, it's a complete mirror image, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. You could find another texture if you wanted to. So as a bit of a challenge, you can try and do the next sections, which is this section of the roof here. So I did one coming downwards here, which I mapped to this area here, and one across the front, and I used this material here, which again you can find in the description. So here you can see my finished barn. So we'll explain a couple of things that I've done, and I'll go through making the roof and these posts with you. So hopefully you've managed to do these parts reasonably well without too many problems. And you can see I haven't really bothered to do any sort of underside here because we're probably seeing it from about here and I'm getting away with it just about in my final render. But I will explain how I made it a bit wobbly like this. So with my plane, I went into edit mode and pressed Control R and did a few loop cuts down the middle here. And then I just grabbed a few verts I just pulled them up and down very lightly. So G then said, just to add a bit of random wobbliness at the bottom. So that's how you get that effect. And you can see mine here. I've done a couple on the side as well, just to add a tiny bit of variation there. For the sides, I've actually done a post and I'll go through how I did that now. So Shift A to add a cube. And I'll go back to layout mode to make it easier. Top view with seven on my numpad and G to grab. Let's scale it right down and scale it in the Z to create a post. And it's roughly around there. I won't put it over the top of the other one. 
And now at this point, if I press N, you can see that it's got non-uniform scale. So I need to press Control A and set that scale so that it's all one. Now I can go to edit mode and it needs to be unwrapped. So this is a slightly more complex process and hopefully you'll get the idea from the previous episode of making the fence. But we need to cut it into sections so the 2D texture knows where to go on this 3D object. Much easier on flat objects like these, but this one it needs to wrap around so we need to mark some seams. The best way to do that is to grab the top edges, so into edge mode, grab those top edges, grab the bottom edges, and one at the back here that's not going to be seen very well, and press Control E, mark seams. Now let's go to UV editing mode, and I can see some of my object here. If I select all my object, you can see how it's unwrapped, and that's the kind of automatic unwrap you get with your cube, but that's not going to work for us at all at the moment. Let's just add one of my materials. So there's my barn side that I created. So it's trying to map to this side of the barn here, but you can see it's all over the place. So when I select all with A and then U unwrap, you can see it goes into these thin strands, which is far more like the shape that I've got here. So I can go to the islands here, and there's one selected island because these are a separate island cut up by the seams. You can see that they've all been separated by the seams. So this is one island. I can then scale this down and move it to a suitable position in my texture. And now you can see I've got this sort of wooden texture going all the way down, which I can place onto my barn. You can place the tops as well. So there's a top and a bottom. This could be the top. Yes, this one's the top and you can place that into position wherever you want and the bottom there as well, but they don't really matter because we won't really see them. And then you can move them into position. Now you can see on my one, I've made it a tiny bit wobbly again. So into edit mode with this, control R, use your wheel, and then just grab an edge loop with alt left click and just grab it out slightly. Click on another one, maybe rotate a bit, G, hold down shift is probably a good idea because then you move in much smaller increments. Don't move it too far because that will actually stretch the textures and you'll probably need to unwrap again. But somewhere around there and we've got a wobbly looking beam. So see now if you could work out how I did the roof. It's not the best unwrap, but again you can get away with a fair bit when you don't see too much of the texture. So once again I started with a cube and just changed the shape. I have subdivided it as well to add that sort of wobbliness, but you can pretend those aren't there because you can add those in afterwards. But you can see my whole top face here, which is the one selected at the moment. Remember I'm on island select. And let's go to our roof material and you can see it's covering this roof here. The bottom one is actually not positioned very well at all, and really I should be positioning that a bit better. So let's rotate that 90 degrees, and now that looks a bit better across the bottom, which it didn't earlier. I could try and line those up a bit to try and get these to line up, but I'm not too worried about that. You can see that I've marked seams on every corner edge. So we've got these thin strips going down here, so you can see I've grabbed this one now and I could try and line that up if I wanted to. But like I say, I was being a bit rough and you can line yours up a bit better than me if you like. And once you're happy with the unwrap, you can go in and then add some loop cuts and do that slight bit of wobbliness to give it a bit of character. So that's how we do the barn. I've copied those four posts around each corner so that they kind of hide the overlap. If you want your objects to be perfectly touching, so these two are perfectly touching, then into edit mode, into vertex mode, grab one of your vertex and choose snapping. And now I can grab and I should be able to snap to the other vertex and then they'll be exactly aligned. It's easier to do that before you've done any cuts. Now, if you've done the previous episode of unwrapping with the fence, then you can include that. If you want to do the grass, I've got another tutorial, which again, the link for that is in the description. You might also want to check out my stencil painting where I stencil paint rather than UV map. So I hope this tutorial has helped you. Do comment below with any thoughts that you have. And if you want to show off your results, you could always get across to the Discord server and chat to me there. Remember to at Grant so that I can easily see your post. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.